We have a system designed by Randall for raising the mast. I designed special brackets to keep the pivot point of the temporary shrouds in plane with the hinge pin on the pivoting mast step. This allows us to raise the mast ourselves from the deck using a winch without the need for a crane. We're pretty comfortable raising the mast at this point. We've done it a lot of times and it goes up pretty slick. Kenzie and I can get it up in just about an hour. We'd like to start out this discussion by saying that we do not recommend raising your own mast with a hinge step on any boat that did not come set up from the factory to do so. Yeah, we nearly dropped our mast two times over the past couple of years of doing this, and it took a lot of trial and error before we got it just right. But we do get lots of questions on how we managed to do it, and we're more than happy to share our experiences raising and lowering our own mast without a crane. Our boat's mast was originally not set up to be self-raising, but to avoid the high cost of crane time, I decided to modify the mast step with a hinge so I could raise it myself. The first time we raised our own mast without a crane, we only had modified the mast step and didn't have the temporary side stays to stabilize the mast while raising and lowering it. So instead, we had ropes running from the top of the mast and being physically handled on either side at the ground. Not only did this require two extra people, it was super sketchy, and I do not recommend this method at all. It was hard to control and very unwieldy, especially if there was a breeze. It's actually a fairly precise system that's required to safely and simply raise and lower the mast on a boat this size. First of all, you obviously need a hinge step and a way to securely attach the mast extrusion to the hinged mast step. You also need pivot points for temporary side stays that are exactly in plane with the hinge pin on the mast step. Otherwise, your side stays will either loosen or tighten as the mast pivots up and down. You also need a cradle situated outboard of the mast center of balance point to hold the mast before it's raised and catch it as it's lowered. Finally, you need a lever to gain a significant angle at which to pull on the mast when it's in its lowest position. In theory, you could easily raise the mast from an aft or forward position, but a rigid furling foil on the forestay dictates that the mast must be raised from the stern. The process is actually quite simple and all the work is really in the setup. You want to first strip the mast of any extra weight and position it in the cradle with the hinge step attached securely to the base of the mast. Our cradle was just an A-frame with a roller and side guards at the top, which attached to the stern pulpit. This allowed me to place the upper end of the mast on the roller from the deck and then easily slide it up on the roller until the foot of the mast was in position to attach the hinge step. The taller this A-frame cradle is the better angle you will have for a starting point for raising your mast. We should note that at this point, Ericsson Yachts placed a really hefty quarter inch aluminum backing plate underneath the mast step, which allowed us a secure and simple method of attaching our modified mast step hinges without any worry that the leverage of hoisting the mast could rip them from the deck. Once the mast is in position in the cradle with the mast step attached, the temporary side stays can be fitted. Again, the lower attachment point for these temporary stays needs to be exactly in line with the hinge pin on the mast step. To accomplish this on a boat with a raised cabin like ours, you'll need to build brackets extending upward from the gunnel with a foot or a brace sitting on the deck to prevent them from deflecting inward when pressure is applied. At this point, you should also make sure your aft stay is in place and your fore stay with most likely your roller furling gear is all attached to the mast with the appropriate cotter pins in place. Next, the lever arm is placed on the mast at the very foot to avoid undue strain on the mast extrusion. This lever arm is absolutely crucial to avoid excessive strain on all the components involved in the lifting process. Without the lever arm, your winch would be pulling nearly in line with the mast rather than pulling perpendicular, which is the force needed to lift the mast from its low angle off the cradle. Again, the longer this piece is, the less strain on the entire mast raising system. The arm can be made out of nearly anything rigid and light, but it needs to be attached very securely to the mast so it does not deflect 
or rotate on the mast when the tension is applied. Lastly, double check that you connected the wiring properly at the base of the mast and double check the function of all systems on the mast. Then run the main halyard from the top of the mast forward through the lever arm and around the bow roller or to a suitable snatch block of some kind and then to a winch capable of hoisting the mast. We mounted a ratcheting boat trailer type winch to the A-frame tower on our boat's trailer, which was conveniently located just in front of the bow roller. At this point, the mast can be raised by simply cranking on the winch. However, extra care needs to be taken to make sure that none of the stays get tangled, snagged, or otherwise fouled while lifting the mast. It is a delicate extrusion and anything catching while you grind on the winch could cause real damage. Pay particular attention to things like the shackles at the lower ends of your aft and side stays. They can easily flop over sideways and then bind. Once the mast is in its full upright position, your forestay can be attached and then the halyard released from the winch. You'll then need to install your cap shrouds and switch out the temporary lower side stays for your permanent side stays. At this point, if you're lucky, you'll have a mast standing vertically on its step rather than crumpled on the ground in pieces. Again, we don't recommend trying this system to anyone thinking about raising their mast on their own, even though it did work well for us after several phases of trial and error. And we also want to thank everybody who has been watching and supporting our videos. We love sharing our knowledge, okay, mostly Randall's knowledge, of sailing and living aboard our sailboat, and we still have a lot more to share with you, so thank you. Stay tuned. Oh, sure now.